ISO 27001 Annex A, 5.32 Intellectual Property Rights. Okay, so the standard is looking at intellectual property. Let's get a bit of a definition first and then I'll teach you how you can implement it and pass the audit. So the organisation should implement appropriate procedures to protect intellectual property rights. That's the guidance that you've got. A couple of things in here. This is intellectual property in all its guises, in all its forms within your organisation. It's the protection of other people's intellectual property and the protection of your intellectual property. As with previous uh, Annex control tutorials, specifically when it comes to the law, get some legal advice. I am not legal counsel. I am not your lawyer. I cannot give you legal advice. I can only show you how to implement it. The best way to implement it is to get some legal advice, right? These are industries in their own right. These are professionals in their own right. And intellectual property is, you know, an absolute minefield and needs to be dealt with. But what is the standard looking at? What are the things in the guidances that you should consider? Let's start off with licensing, intellectual property of other people. What we need to be able to do is we need to be able to evidence that we have licenses for the products and services and specifically the software that we are using and that we are adhering to those licenses, right? So what that means is you're going to have a software license register. In that register, you're going to record what licenses you've got, uh, who you've applied them to, what usage that they've got, because the auditor is going to check. There is no point in getting an open source free piece of software and then implement it into your organization for commercial use and saying, oh, I didn't know when the terms and conditions of the license are that it can't be used for commercial use, right? So make sure that you are using software in the way that it is legally uh, gifted to you, in the, in the way that it is legally uh, engaged with you, right? You need to make sure that you have licenses for everything and the licenses are appropriate and cover the usage that you've got. So software usage license, uh, software license register, absolutely going to be golden. There's other laws around that, right? I don't know if they still exist. Federation Against Software Theft, FAST, uh, things like that. So we're going to have a policy on that. We're going to put a policy in that says that we review uh, and fully meet our requirements for intellectual property. We're going to make sure that our software license is in date. If we have internal intellectual property that we want to protect, then you're going to put in the policy and the procedures around that. It is not the case that everybody has intellectual property. It depends. If you are a software development house, then you are going to have potentially code that is specific to you that you want to protect that. Get some legal advice and understand that. Understand how you're going to protect it what your contracts with your customers, with your contractors, with your suppliers need to say to protect it. Understand whether or not you need to implement escrow around code uh, and what that means and what that looks like, right? Topics that are beyond the realm of this tutorial but are provided to you for guidance. So this is about intellectual property. When we look at things uh, that can fall in here, copyright, again, a no-brainer. Copyright is the law. Make sure that if you are using copyright and trademarks that you own them. Make sure that you have licenses that allow you to do with copyrighted materials what it is that you are doing with them. We don't just download images off of the internet and include them in our marketing materials and our websites. We don't just take major brands and put them on our customer testimonials without getting their approval first. Copyright is absolutely key and the auditor is going to check that. One of the things that will happen when you eventually certify for 27,001, you will be provided with a certificate and you will be provided with marks that can go on your website. These are specific and the way that they are uh, distributed, the way that they are published, the way that they have to look is regimented and they will check that. They will make sure that if you are using their marks, their copyright, their intellectual property, you are doing it in a way that meets the contract that you signed with them when you went for 27001 certification. That is the low-hanging fruit. Certification marks from certification auditors, low-hanging fruit. Software licenses, low-hanging fruit. Everything else is going to be up to you because it's going to be specific to you. And for all of that, you're going to go and get yourself some legal advice. Okay? So that is intellectual property. My name is Stuart Barker. I am the ISO 27001 Ninja. Until the next tutorial, peace out.